makers of Postum, the favorite mealtime drink in three million American homes, present your favorite radio friends, Lum and Abner. I'd give a million dollars for a good night's sleep. <laughs> if you've ever said that, you've meant it. And if you had the money, you'd give it. But it's seldom that bad. True, if you can't sleep soundly, there must be something wrong. But that something may be very easily fixed. It may be simply coffee. For while a great many people can drink coffee without any ill effects, many others should never drink it. If you are one of these, switch to Postum. For Postum contains no caffeine or any other stimulant that could possibly disturb your sleep. Postum is made of whole wheat and bran, slightly sweetened and roasted to a turn to bring out the full, rich flavor of the grain. And what a flavor. So mellow and satisfying that it almost defies you to put the cup down. So if coffee keeps you awake, give it up. Get Postum tomorrow. Drink a delicious steaming cupful or two at every meal, even late at night if you wish, and see if you don't get a good night's sleep. It won't cost you a million dollars either, for Postum is very economical. It costs less than one half cent a cup. Try it. And now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the old fellows now feel that they have made an important discovery. Last Friday, while replacing the dirt dug up in Abner's yard last week by Squire Skimp while he was drilling for oil, Cedric Weehunt found a bone from the skeleton of some animal. Lum is convinced that they have found the fossil of some prehistoric animal, and they've been busy for the past few days trying to unearth the rest of the discovery. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner down at the Jot and Down store. Uh, Lum is just entering. Listen. Come in. Oh, come in, Lum. Come well, in. I believe I found it, Abner. You ain't been over there digging some more, have you? No, no. I mean, I found what we're digging for. Or found... Wait a minute. There ain't nobody back there in the feed room, are they? No. Why? Well, we just got to be careful not to talk this around too much. Oh, uh, you say you found it? No, but I found a book that tells all about them prehistoric things. Or wait a minute, ain't no use to whisper. There ain't nobody back there. Oh, no, no, sure. Uh, here, uh, boy, this book from Evelina. Well? According to her, it could be one of them animals, all right. Could, huh? Yeah, she says them dinosaurs lived in this country. Well? Found one out in Arizona here a few years ago. Did they catch it? It was just a skeleton of one, Abner. There ain't been one of them alive for a million years. For the land, say. That's what makes them so valuable. Here, here's a picture of them. Picture of them? Well, if I can find it here. He's looking at it over the schoolhouse a while ago. Well, it shows my ignorance. I, I never even know they had Kodaks back in them days. Well, this is just a drawed picture. Taking a skeleton and put it back together with wires and then drawed it the way it looked whenever it was alive. Here, here, here it is. Right, Is that what we're digging for? Yes, sir, right there. Well, I hope we don't find it then. Oh, he'll be worth a lot of money to a museum. See, they buy all them things you can get. Well, what are they good for, Lom? Well, nothing except for folks to come in and look at. Here, here's a skeleton of one. See there? Well, I don't see nothing about that that's pretty. Well, it ain't supposed to be pretty. It's just interesting to see what kind of animals used to live here. Oh, yeah, I reckon so. Yeah. The fact is, I was sort of thinking this morning, Abner, when we get that and dug up, instead of selling it to some museums, we might join up with some carnival and have our own sideshow. So much to see the dinosaur. And then I could give a speech on them old-timey animals. Now, now there you go again, Lon. You said the other day you was going to stay here and run the jot and down store, not get into no other kind of business. Well, when some opportunities like this comes along, a fella be crazy to pass it up. Well, now, I don't want to go traipsing around over the country with a bunch of bones charging admission to see them, scaring the daylights out of everybody. Well, ain't no use to argue about that till we get it all dug out. Well, yeah, now, there's another thing. Elizabeth's just raising sand about us digging up her yard that way. We keep fooling around. She's going to get so aggravated she won't let us finish. Well, we're hurrying as fast as we can. 
we can't dig over there in the daytime, or somebody's going to catch on to what we're doing. Well, what difference does it make? It ain't again the law to dig them things up, is it? No, but if we're going to charge admission to see it, we can't let everybody look at it for nothing. No, no. Besides, an important discovery like this, it's got to be kept secret. That's the reason I swore Grandpappy Spears and Cedric to secrecy. Well, now, folks is going to see all them lanterns over there by night, well, I'm want to know what we're doing with the yard lit up that way. Just tell them we're having a Halloween party or something. This time of year? That's right, ain't it? Why, of course. Well, don't tell them what we're digging for. Well, now, we better tell Elizabeth what we're digging for, Lum. I believe she's getting sort of suspicious. Suspicious? Why, sure, I bound you she asked me a hundred questions at breakfast this morning. She did, huh? Yeah, of course. The first night we was over there, I told her we was digging for fish bait. And then when we had to dig the second night, well, I told her we was digging for gold. And, well, now I just about run out of something to tell her. Well, why do you have to tell her anything? It's your own business if you and a few of your friends want to gather over there every night and dig in the yard, ain't it? Well, yeah, only she just don't want the yard dug up, Lom. All right, we'll dig over at my place then. I grant if nobody can stop us over... Oh, wait a minute, Tom. That Diana Sarah's over there at your place, ain't it? Well, uh, why couldn't we dig it up and take it over to your place and... Bur- uh, oh, uh, nothing. It won't work. Well, it'll work, but it won't do no good. Well, why don't we just swear Elizabeth in and tell her the truth about it? Well, now, that's the best thing to do. Only thing, I don't believe she'll swear to all that rigmarole that you had Grandpap and Cedric swearing to long. Why, what was wrong with that? Ain't no worse than what a body has to swear to when he joins the lodge. Yeah, I know it, and it was just about the same thing, might not I? Blindfolded them and led them around your house there. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't see where all that was necessary. You just the same as initiated both of them into the lodge is what you done. Yeah, it was right, smart like it, all right. And I still can't see what difference it makes if we do tell somebody about it. Well, I don't know. The fella gets to feeling sort of mysterious whenever he's digging around for them dinosaurs. Just look at that picture there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to have him mounted right here in the store. Fine dog as I wouldn't. Looks like an overgrown lizard to me is what it looks like. It does a little. Or a kangaroo. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a job getting all them bones together, you know it. In the right place and all. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to look. Why, I don't believe we got more than half of it dug out yet. Supposing it ain't all there, Lon, then what? Oh, they're bound to all be there. Grandpap and Cedric's over at the house now putting together that backbone and all. Well, good. Good for them. See, this country in through here was all at the bottom of the ocean at one time or another. And... Bottom of the ocean? Yes, sir. This whole country was covered with water. Oh. <laughs> well, it was. I don't believe That's it. the reason we found that dinosaur over there. These mountains around here is more than likely islands. Well, Oh, me, we might dig around here and run into a battleship. That ain't no telling. They never had battleships back in them days. Never, huh? Fact is, there weren't no humans back at that time. Nothing but animals. Well, who buried that dinosaur so deep then if there weren't no humans? Well, according to what Evelina says, after the lotion left here, then these animals lived here, and they was more likely covered up with, uh, what did she call it? Well, dirt, what it is. Well, I know, but what caused the dirt to be old glaciers or volcanoes or something like that? Never heard of it. She ought to know about such as that. She's a graduate from the state teacher's normal. Yeah, sure. Well, sir, now that is right interesting. That's what I say. Yeah, we've got a chance here to make scientifics out of ourselves. Have, huh? If Elizabeth don't stop us from digging, we'll tell them what all we'll find under that hill your house sets on over there. You ain't even on digging up the whole hill, are you? Well, it depends on what we find. Well, now, long before we go digging my whole place up over there, I want to find out what these things is worth, these here dinosaurs. Might be it. Nobody's buying them right now. Well, I don't know till we get it put together and advertise it for sale. I reckon that's the way you go about it. Well, by that time, we'll have one whole side of my house caved in. We ain't digging three foot from the setting room right now. Yeah, I know. Cedric got a little too close there. I know he did. Just kept following along there and digging them ditches around. Well, now, Evelina said this morning if I wanted to get some more information about it, we could write to the state university. Maybe I could call them and find out what they're worth. Why, sure, that's the thing to do. Yeah. Tell them, call them up and see what they say. Ain't no use to waste their time that way. Yeah, then we'll know what we're doing. Why, sure. 
You better come and have them come down here and look at it and be sure if that's what it is, too, Lon. Well, I know. Uh, hello? Is this the central and is the county seat? Never seen no dinosaur. Well, I want to put in a long-distance call to the state. Oh, all right. Wind up with the Don't connect me with the long-distance. Uh, hello? Oh, Why, I want to talk to the professor at the state university at Fayetteville. Yes, Ma. Professor, there is. Why, any of them that knows about dinosaurs and such as that. Uh-huh. Well, could you ask them for me? Uh-huh. Uh, Lum Edwards. Yes, Ma. Pine Ridge, two longs and a short. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Uh, Ma? Oh, all right. Fine. If you will, please. Thank you, Ma. She's going to call me whenever she gets uh, there home. comes Cedric and Grandpat now, Ma. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, come in, fellas. Come on in. What in the world's the matter, Sam? I don't know. What you making all them signs for? Oh, I know. Huh? Uh, Gabba Rooka Fi. What does that mean? Yeah, Gabba Rooka Fi. Huh? Gabba Rooka Fi. Oh, that's that secret stuff you told them, eh? Yeah, uh, enter my vessel, or uh, vassals. Approach and be recognized. For goodness sake, Mom, you surely know Grandpap and Sadly. Keep out of this, Abner. It's all right now, fellas. Did you get all them pieces put together? They've been trying to, Lom. He's a job, though. Well, Lom's got a picture now of what it's supposed to look like, yeah. fellas. Yeah, here's a book. Shows just how them dinosaurs look yeah, like. Show, show them that picture. Oh, well, that'll yeah, be a big help. We never know what we're supposed to start or wind up with or nothing. No. <laughs> it is sort of a puzzle to start out put something together when you don't. Was that our ring, then? I believe, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, I uh, I'll get it uh, Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello? All right. He's calling up the phone. Hello? University. Who is this? Oh, well, I never wanted a doctor. I wanted to uh, talk to the professor, somebody that knows about dinosaurs. And... Oh, well, fine. <laughs> uh, Why, well, we've got one. No, just a skeleton. Dug it up over there on that, or Mr. Peabody's place. Here, here in Pine Ridge. Well, I want to know, is them things worth anything now? Yeah, I uh-huh. Well, good. Well, good. Well, I wish you would. Yeah, we're putting it together now. Well, fine. Just come to Pine Ridge and ask for me, Long Edwards or Abner Peabody. Yes, sir. Uh, huh? Oh, goodbye. <laughs> All right, Granny, we must have something sure enough, man, from the way he got excited. He did? Yeah, he says to be careful with it that we might uh, made an important discovery there. Well, good, <laughs> He'll be good. down this week to see it. Well, good All right, Granny, I told you we had something there, huh? Something there, huh? Edwards and Peabody, archaeologists. The makers of Postum, the favorite mealtime drink in three million American homes, present your favorite radio friends, Lum and Abner. I wonder if you can see this picture grow before your eyes as I can. A businessman with a job of work to do and not too much time to do it in. A tired businessman priming himself with coffee cup after cup of it. And finally, an irritable businessman. Nervous, jittery, hard to get along with. Now, that may even be a picture of you yourself. And like the man in the picture, maybe your jumpiness, too, is caused by coffee. For though it's true many people can drink coffee without ill effects, it's also true that many others cannot. And if you suspect that you're one of them, why not try drinking Postum instead? Postum contains no caffeine, no stimulant of any kind that could fray your nerves. It's a blend of whole wheat and bran, skillfully roasted and slightly sweetened. A rich, full-bodied drink with a tempting aroma and a flavor so thoroughly delicious and mellow, you'll be quick to ask for a second cup. So if coffee makes you nervous, get Postum from your grocer tomorrow. Drink it every mealtime instead of coffee and see if you don't feel better. (laughs) 
And now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Lum and Abner are more convinced than ever that the fossil of some animal which they unearthed in Abner's yard is a species of prehistoric animal known as a dinosaur. A day before yesterday, they called the state university and reported their discovery and were informed that they would send an authority of archaeology to Pine Ridge this week. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner and Grandpappy Spears over at Lum's house, where they are restoring the fossil to its natural form. Listen. Uh, hand me some more of that baling water, Grandpap. Grandpap? Huh? Oh, yeah. what'd you say, Abner? Hand me some more of that baling water. Oh, yeah, sure. I wish sure. you'd pay attention here and help me if you're going to. What are you doing over there? Well, I'm just uh, looking at this book Lum's got here, these historic animals. Well, now, we ain't got time to look at books. We've got one of them right here if we can get it put together. Lum wants us to hurry and get this thing rigged up before that professor from the universities gets here. Well, why ain't he over here helping us in? Well, he went down to the barber shop to get himself a shave and haircut so as he'll look nice to meet that feller. Well, is he supposed to be here today? Well, we don't know for sure. He said over the telephone day before yesterday that he'd be down here one day this week, and, well, Lum seems to think for some reason or other he'll get here today. Uh-huh. Uh, how long a piece of this wire will you need? Oh, that'll be enough. That'll be enough. I just thought I'd better put another strand around here to be sure this leg or whatever it is don't fall off. Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Wait a minute, Abner. That ain't right. What ain't right? That piece there. You're getting his back legs too long there. That's part of his front leg you got on there. It ain't no such a thing. His back legs is supposed to be longer than his front. Why, they ain't done it. They are too now, Grandpap. Don't try to tell me nothing about them dinosaurs. I know how they're supposed to look. Well, I just got done looking at the picture one of them. I ought to know something about how they look myself. Let me put this leg up here in front, and I'll show you. Now, you just keep your hands off of that. I won't do it. I've got just as much say-so about this as you have. I helped find it, didn't I? No, sir. Cedric's found it. Er, uh, well, that is, he found a piece of the bone, and we dug up for the rest of it. Yeah. I hope you can dig for it, though. Well, yeah, but it was found on my property now. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me have that book. I'll show you who's right All about it. Right. Show me if you think you're so smart. Now, well, just wait till I find it here. Look That's it right there. there. Oh, that ain't no picture of a dinosaur. It that's is, a, don't it? It ain't. That's a... Well, I can't pronounce that name, but it's some other kind of animal that lived back in them times. Oh, well, no wonder. That's, that's what it, I've yeah. been looking at all the time. Here, here it is. Here it is. Now, now look there. See there? His legs is shorter there like a kangaroo in front, and his back and ends a heap longer. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the first time in my life I was ever wrong about anything. And that weren't my fault. I was looking at the wrong picture. Well, now, let's see here. Dog is according to this. That neck ain't going to be long enough we got there. Maybe this was a young one. Weren't full growed yet. No, no. I, I, I believe we just got him put together wrong, Grandpa. Yes, sir. I, I believe we'd take some of that backbone out of there and put it up on his neck. It'd help some. Yeah, couldn't do that all right. Yeah, yeah. It's going to make him awful short couple, though. Well, that in that picture is pretty short, too. Mostly all neck. You reckon how they ever figured out how to put these things together in the first place? I don't know. Worse than a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, just a good thing we had a picture to go by, I'll say that. Well, it still don't look just right to me. Well, now, don't start in to change it. Me and Cedric's worked all day yesterday until midnight last night on this thing. Sure, I'd be a little jubers working on something like this of a night that way, Abner. Yeah. Well, Cedric was a little jumpy. Never bothered me none, no. Like I told Cedric, I never heard an old ghost being a million year old. That's how old Lum says these things are. Uh, well, why'd you make Lum happy? Why, he had that there premieres of our moving picture over at the schoolhouse last night, and he had to run the machine. Oh, sure, sure. What's the matter with me? <laughs> I was over there myself. Yeah. Well, sir, I felt downright sorrowful for Lum. Lum? Everybody laughing there in them sad scenes. Whenever he's making love to her, everybody just busted out laughing. Well? That is, without a doubt, the poorest excuse for a moving picture I ever seen in my life, Abner. Yeah, well, Lum knows it. He knows it. He said the same thing himself when he got back last night. Well, I can tell you right now, nobody ain't going to pay money to see that thing. 
can't get no sense out of it. Well. And it's out of date now. They don't have silent pictures no more. Yeah, I know, I know. We had no business buying a silent picture camera to start with. I know that. And there's parts of it there you can't see who it is even. Heads is clean out of the picture. Well. Must not have had the camera set right or something. Yeah, well, personal, I'm just glad it turned out the way it did. It's cured Lum of wanting to make moving pictures, I'll tell you that. He said last night he hoped he never seen another, regardless of who made it. Well, good, good. Yeah, if you fellas just stay out of city that, you'd be a heap better off, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I know it, I know it. He says now, though, quick as we sell this dinosaur, that he's going to settle down, not do nothing, but just run the jot him down store. Yeah, here, 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 we get the gabbing. We never will get this thing put together. No, well, there ain't much left here to do now. There's... Two or three pieces laying there on the floor, but I can't find no place to put them. No, sort of like putting a watch back together. Feller Solo's got a lot of pieces left over. Yeah, why, why don't we just take and hide them for if Lom sees them, he'll make us tear the whole thing down just to get them in there. Yeah, yeah. We'll uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's that coming up there on the porch? I never hear nobody. Yeah, I've seen somebody come. Oh, yeah, come in. Is Mr. Lum at home? Oh, hi, howdy, Cedric. Uh, no, he ain't here. He uh, went over to the barber shop. Well, there's an article here in the paper Mr. Dick sent over for him to read. An uh, article? Yes, Mom. Tell him all about him finding this dinosaur out here. Oh, well, let, let me see it. Let me see it. Here, here, Grandpap. Uh, wore this piece of neck on there for me. Yeah, get down off of that step ladder and we Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, let me down. Do you know if that ain't the curiousest looking critter I ever seen in my life? <laughs> I'd hate to meet one of them things of a night. Or any time for as that goes. And listen to this. It's mostly about Lum instead of the dinosaur. He must have given this article himself when he's in there at the county seat yesterday to get that film. Yeah, what does he say, Emmer? Oh, well, it starts off big letters up here at the top here. Uh, Lum Edwards makes him... Horton's Discovery at Pine Ridge. And it goes on, uh, Mr. Edwards, who for many years has been interested in uh, archaeology's unearthed fossil of prehistoric dinosaur. Listen to that. Archaeologies. Now, what does that mean? I don't know, and I don't believe Lum does neither. Mr. Eddard states that he has believed for a number of years that the area around Pine Ridge was at one time the habitate of nu numerous prehistoric monsters, and his discovery only serves to Substantiate his theories. Now, Lum never read this. He don't know that many big words. Well, Mr. Dick says it sounds like he told him about it, though. Oh, right? yeah, there ain't no doubts about that. Don't even mention the rest of us at all. And just barely does mention the dinosaur. How does that look now, Abner? Uh, oh, that's a heap better, Grandpap. Yeah, it looks more like one of them now. Now, just leave it alone now. Don't spoil it. I ain't. I just want to get down and see what it looks like Yeah, now. well, just don't bother it no more. It don't look like nothing i ever seen. I know that. Well, that's what makes it so valuable, Cedric. It ain't supposed to. Yeah, sir, I believe that's it, Abner. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll make some money out of that thing. You're no right about them hind legs. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, it was a job. Been working on this thing, digging it up and putting it together for my nigh a week. Oh, yeah, I'm tired of looking at it. I just hope we don't find no nothing around here now. Maybe I can get back over the store and get some work done. Somebody coming up on the porch there, I think, Mr. Abner. Huh, huh, oh, oh. Oh, well, come in, Lom. Uh, how's he look now? Oh, my goodness, have you got it all put together? Yeah, I just got done just before you come in. <laughs> it looks more like a dinosaur now, don't he, Lum? Yeah. Yeah, but I... Well, I hate to tell you, but we're going to have to take it all apart again. Do what? I've got telegrams here from a half a dozen different museums wanting to buy it. But we're going to take it apart and cure it up again. Bury it? Well, what in the world do you want to do that for, Lum? If somebody wants to buy it, why, let them have it, for goodness sake. Well, we can sell it any time, but listen to this telegram. Huh? <laughs> it says, read of your discovery. Stop. Don't disturb fossil until we get there. We'll pay you well for picture rights showing unearthing of dinosaur. 
American Newsreel Service. Oh, oh, I see. You're going to let them make a moving picture out of it, huh? No, I ain't going to let them make a moving picture out of it. Our grannies, we're going to make the moving picture ourselves. Huh? That silent camera of ours will work all right for this. Our grannies, I know that I can make a success out of this moving picture business. Well, it looks as though the Pine Ridge Motion Picture Company is back in business. Postum, the favorite mealtime drink in three million American homes, presents your favorite radio friends, Lum and Abner. Before we look in on Lum and Abner, we'd like to thank one of our listeners for a very helpful suggestion. You may want to thank him, too, for he said, You've been telling everyone who shouldn't drink coffee to drink Postum instead. All right. But what about people like me, who find that coffee doesn't bother them if they drink it only in the morning? And I like a warm drink with all my meals. So why don't you suggest that those people drink Postum for lunch and for supper? Well, that's a good idea. For Postum is a drink that will easily satisfy your craving for a delicious and cheering hot beverage at every meal. Satisfy it handsomely and without the slightest chance of ill effect. For Postum contains no trace of caffeine or any other stimulant that could affect your nerves, your digestion, or your sleep. So, if coffee doesn't agree with you, switch to Postum. When you realize how inexpensive it is, only a half cent a cup, how easy it is to make, how mellow and full-bodied its flavor is, and how quickly you forget coffee, then you'll know why Postum is the favorite hot drink in one out of every nine homes in this country. And now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner are more enthused than ever over the fossil they unearthed in Abner's yard, which they believe to be a dinosaur. The day before yesterday, they decided to make a motion picture of the discovery, showing them unearthing the fossil and how the animal looks after they have it put together. They now have it on display at Lum's house and are charging admission for the local citizens to view the curiosity. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner over at their jot em down store talking with Cedric Weehunt. Listen. Well, where, whereabouts is Mr. Lum at now? Why, he taking that professor from a university to order his place to look at the dinosaur. Oh, I never knowed he'd got here yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Coming to store here about a oh, half hour ago, I reckon. Introduced himself to us. I'd love to have saw him. Yeah, well, he just looked like common, ordinary never, folks. Never have saw a dinosaur or a professor either. <laughs> well, have you seen that and over at the place, Cedric? But you ain't never seen one before that. That's what you mean, ain't it? Yes, <laughs> well, uh, well, is he going to buy it? Well, I don't know. He wanted to look at it first, of course. I hope he does buy it, though. I'm sick and tired of looking at the thing. Me, too. I don't want to dig any more of them things up. I know that. Oh, no, no. Well, it's such a job trying to figure out how to put the thing together. Had to, had it put together once, and, and Lum had us tear it down and bury it again so we could take them moving pictures. You ain't got them films back yet, have you? Well, I know, Cedric. You sent them off to have them developed yesterday. Oh, I'm curious to see them, see how I look. Well, now, it ain't supposed to be a picture of you, Cedric. Well, I'm in it, ain't I? Well, yeah, but, well, it just shows us digging it up and putting it together at all. Well, Mr. Lum was in it a lot, I noticed that. Oh, my, yes, yes, yeah, oh, me. He had to stand there and boss the job wearing that hunting outfit he had on. Well, how come him to dress himself up in an outfit like that, anyway? Oh, he's seen a picture in that book of them prehistoric animals of some other feller finding one of them, and he had on an outfit like that. Except he was in Afikir or some such a place when he found his. And, you know, that's a right interesting book, Cedric. It is, huh? Oh, yeah, it tells all about them old-timey animals. Pearl was reading it out loud to us last night. Well... Different places where they've dug them up, you know. Well, did they live under the ground, sort of like moles? Oh, no. No, Cedric. Well, you always have to dig them up, I know. Oh, well, they lived a million or a thousand years ago. 
And since that time, why, they just got kivered up. Oh. oh, no, no, they used to live on top of the ground. They was four or five times as big as elephants, that book said. Well, that and over there at Mr. Lum's house ain't that big. No, no, I know it ain't. I, I think this one must have been a right young one. Don't reckon he'd been hatched very long. Hatched? Yeah, yes, sir. Them things laid eggs, Cedric, and dinosaurs. You mean an animal four or five times as big as an elephant laid eggs like a chicken? According to that book, they did. They found some of the eggs. Got them on display. <laughs> Uh, I'd hate to have a hen house full of them things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it'd be fair to go out and gather the eggs. <laughs> You'd have to haul it to the house in a wheelbarrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just thinking what a time the young ones would have at an Easter egg hunt with them things. <laughs> Wouldn't be no trouble to find them, Marty. Oh, no, no. But go to buy a set of them eggs, you'd have to take a truck and a trailer along to get them home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Now, that would be something. A dinosaur farm. There comes Mr. Lum. <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah. And the professor ain't with him, either. I just hope Lum never turned down no offers. I'd love to get what money we can out of the thing and get shut of it. Well, you're making money out of it now, ain't you? You're charging admission to go in Mr. Lum's house and see it. Yeah, but, well, that ain't going to last long, though, Cedric. I think by now everybody in this part of the country has done seen it by now. Sure was a gang of them over there yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Grandpap's staying over there selling tickets. He take in better than ten dollars over there yesterday. Uh, Roof Rankin says it's the greatest thing he ever seen. He did, huh? He taking his whole family over to see it, even the little baby. Yeah, I know, I know. I seen him over there. We made a deal with him, uh, taking the whole family that way. <laughs> if we hadn't, it'd have broke him. He's got 11 children. Well, honey, Mr. Long. Uh, what did the professor say, Long? Well, sir, I've got some good news, Abner. He says that ain't no dinosaur over there. Oh, my goodness. Well, I don't call that good news. Why, well, sure it is. He, he says no telling what that thing is. And no telling what it's worth, neither. Says it's something that ain't never been heard of before. A new kind of historic animal. Oh, well, good. Good yeah, for him. Yeah, I'm sick of two deaths. <laughs> Why, sure, Yeah, sure. he's all excited about it. He is, huh? Yeah, fact is, we quit selling tickets so he can be left there alone and examine it good. Oh, yeah, sure. That's the thing to do, yes, sir. Now, he's he... got a lot of books with him, and he's going to read up on these different animals and study it. Uh-huh. And just to think... <laughs> It was found right there in my yard. <laughs> yeah. Well, he says he believes this is going to turn out to be the greatest discovery that's ever been made on this continent. Says it might be the missing link. Uh, missing what? The missing link, he said. Uh, who was it lost it? I don't know. That's just what he said, though. Well, now, somebody else tries to claim that they had that thing once and lost it over in my yard. Well, now, I'm don't not... worry about that, Abner. I don't think that's what he means no way. Wait a minute. Where about you going, Cedric? Well, I'm going back over there and take another look at that thing. I never knowed what a curiosity I was looking at. Well, now, don't get in the professor's way no, now. No, let him concentrate so he can figure out what it is. Yeah. Well, sir, I'm just glad you called that pillar to come down here, Lum. Oh, yeah. This is by far the greatest thing we've ever did yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm tickled to death. <laughs> we'll more than likely go down in history as two of the greatest archaeologists that ever lived. We will, huh? Yeah, have pictures of us and all them books like that, and I got over there to play. Yeah, yeah. Statutes of us. Calling us Professor Edwards and Professor Peabody, the oh. scientific. <laughs> well, good for us. There's something I've always wanted to be is a professor. But I know, of course, I couldn't, for I just went through the third grader. Of course, I <laughs> could teach up to there, I reckon. Oh, teach well, this kind of, uh, this is a different kind of a professor. I mean, you don't have to have no book learning to be one of these. This is a sort of an honorary professor. Oh, oh, oh. No, sir, this whole thing has worked out fine, you know what? Oh, my, yes, yes. Yeah, we can sell that thing for a lot of money, and then we can sell that moving picture, or we'll make a fortune out of them things. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm glad we made them now. I just hope Squire Skimp don't try to step in there and claim part of it. Squire Skimp? Yeah, we give him a half interest in the moving picture company for that land of mine back home. Oh, yeah, that's right, ain't it? Why, sure we did. And the minute we start making any money out of it, he's going to step in and want us to divide with him, too. Yeah, dad blame him anyway. Every time we get a chance to make any money, that squire skin... Or wait a minute, though. We unsolved the Pine Ridge Moving Picture Company, Abner. 
We did, huh? Why, of course we did. Squire ain't got a leg to stand on. Hi, doggy, that's right. No, he ain't got a leg to... A leg to... Huh? Why, he ain't got a chance in the world of collecting nothing. Let him try it. Why, no. <laughs> if he's that way, we can outrun him. Oh, I ain't gonna run from him. Just let him try to collect it. More than likely, be over here quick as he finds out what kind of animal we've got over there and be wanting his part of it. Well, I don't know, Lum. I doubt it if he's in that condition. I'll just tell him to get out of this door and stay out. Oh, well, now, Lum, I wouldn't want to talk rough to him, Lum. That wouldn't be right. I don't know why. He knows he ain't got no right to nothing we make out of that moving picture. Yeah, I know, but, well, I... Just sort of feel sorrowful for a feller like that, Lum. Feel sorrowful for Squire Skim? Yeah, I, I, I just can't help it, Lum. Uh, when did it happen? You mean, when did what happen? The, uh, the accident. What in the world are you talking about? What accident? Squire's accident. Is, is he in a hospital or is he at home, Lum? I'd love to see him and I talk to him. I never knowed he had no accident. When was that? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. Is Squire hurt? Well, you just got done talking about it, Lom. Said he never had no legs now. Well, I never said no such a thing. You did, too. Said he wouldn't stand a chance of collecting nothing from us on that moving picture because he never had no legs. Well, that's a ridiculous thing I ever heard of. Said he couldn't even stand up. That's what you said. What in the world are you talking about, anyway? Well, you sure said it just now. I never done it. You did, too. I know what I said. We was talking about Squire trying to claim part of the money we're going to make out of this moving picture, and I said he never had a leg to... Uh, yes, sir. Wait yeah. a minute. I know what I said. I said he never had a leg to stand on. That's just what you well, said. Well, I never meant he never had no legs, Abner. I mean, in court he wouldn't have no legs to stand on. Huh? Or, that was our ring. Thank goodness, saved by the bell. I'll get it. Now, Hello? What are you talking about now? Saved by the bell. Jot him down, store. He ain't got legs and he has got them. This is him. He wouldn't have them in court. He wouldn't have them no place. Who? Oh, oh, yeah, sure, sure. You never favored yourself over the telephone, Professor. Don't cut off a feller's legs when he goes to... Going go. back. Well, don't you want to buy that dinosaur? Oh, that's a professor from the university. That's what well, I'm if about. that's all that's wrong, we can tear it down and put it together right. Oh, we got the thing wrong again. It's a what? Oh, you surely must be mistaken about that, Professor. I... Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad you come down anyway. Goodbye. What's the matter, Lom? You look like you just hear judgment was coming tomorrow. <laughs> Hand me a dip of water quick, Admiral. I'm feared I'm going to have another one of my sinking spells. Oh, my goodness. The professor says that ain't no historic animal at all. Well, what in the world is it then? He says... He says it ain't nothing but a... But a mule we've got put together over there. A mule? Yeah, and said we never had that put together right. And another one of the old fellow's dreams seems to have exploded right in their face. The makers of Postum, the favorite mealtime drink in three million American homes, present your favorite radio friends, Lum and Abner. I'd intended tonight to talk particularly to business people, but a letter came in that took the words right out of my mouth. So I'm going to let the woman who wrote the letter tell her own story. My job calls for long hours and plenty of real hard work. And like a good many people, I started relying mostly on coffee to keep me going. But I found myself getting more and more nervous and jittery. Not until I ran across a poster man in a magazine did it strike me that it might be that very coffee that set my nerves on edge. Anyway, I started drinking co- postum from then on. And within a month, my nerves were much steadier. And I was almost my old self again. I wonder how many of you could trace your jumpiness and nervousness to coffee. For while it's true that many people can drink coffee safely without becoming nervous and upset, it's also true that many others should never drink it. If you suspect that coffee may be upsetting your nerves, 
try drinking Postum instead. Postum contains no caffeine, no stimulant of any kind which could set your nerves on edge. It's made of whole wheat and bran, roasted to a tempting brown and slightly sweetened. A grand drink with a rich, full-bodied flavor you like instantly. Get Postum from your grocer tomorrow. Drink it regularly instead of coffee, if coffee upsets you, and see if you don't feel less tense and strained and jittery. And now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Last Friday, Lum and Abner suffered a big disappointment. The fossil, which they recently unearthed on Abner's place and which they thought was a dinosaur, upon an examination by a professor of archaeology from the State University, turned out to be the carcass of a mule. Well, this not only ruined their plans of making a huge fortune out of the discovery, but will also make the motion pictures which they made of the fossil worthless. As we look in on the little community today, we find that Ab- <laughs> Abner and Grandpappy Spear seated back in the feed room of the Jotham Down store. Listen. I think I hear somebody else come in the front part of the store there, Abner. Yeah, be right quiet. Maybe they'll leave, Grandpa. Now, this ain't no way for you to run a store, Abner. Us hiding back here in a feed room playing checkers. Well, this is the only place we can come to and not be interrupted. That's the way you beat me them first two games, me having to get up and wait on customers. You ain't accused me of cheating, are you? Well, I wouldn't come right out flat-footed and say that, but... Well, it didn't look to me like I had as many men when I got back as I did when I left. Yeah, I might know you figure out some excuse. According to your tell of it, you never was beat honest in your life. Well, I don't reckon I was. Sassy fresh. Sassy fresh. I forgot more about playing checkers than you ever know. Well, move then if you know so much. Don't sit there and gab Abner. all day. Move. Abner. Oh, my goodness. Be quiet. That's long. That's long. Abner. Is that you back there in the feed room? No. Be quiet, be quiet, Grandpa. Maybe he'll leave. Well, you may as well answer him, Abner. You've got to come out of here sometime. Dad, blame it. I thought he'd be gone for two hours. Uh, just what I thought. That we're straightening up this feed room, Lom. <laughs> uh, I can see that. Give me that checkerboard. No, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Lom. Don't hide it again now. I had a hard enough time finding it a while ago. Hi, uh, Granny. I'm getting sick and tired of the way this store's being run. I met Ezra Seastonk down the road there just now, and he said he was over here a while ago with a whole long list of stuff he wanted to buy, and there weren't nobody here. Well, he's just telling something. I've been here all the time, ain't I, Grandpa? Yeah, we've been sitting right here for over an hour. Yes, sir. Why, sure, hiding back here in the feed room. We weren't hiding no such a thing. Just got back here where we wouldn't be bothered none. Did you hear Ezra come in? Why, well, I never knowed it was Ezra. No telling how many others come in here wanting stuff. You couldn't hear them back here. I could have done it. There was just two more is all it was. Oh, you admit to it, huh? You never waited on them neither. Uh, well, you know how many loafers there is hanging around these days, Lom. And besides, they more than likely wouldn't have wanted to buy nothing. If they did, it'd be something we's out of. Well, this ain't no way to run a store, I'll tell you that right now. That's just what I was telling him, too, Lum, just before you come in. And you're just as much to blame as he is, Grandpap. You come over here and nag him into these checker games. Why don't you get out here and tend to your chief of police duties? Why, well, there ain't nothing to tend to. Ain't nothing going on. Well, if there was, you wouldn't know nothing about it sitting back here. They could rob the whole town without you knowing it. Who could? Who's fixing to rob something? Well, I don't know, I guess. Yeah, yes, you do, too. You're trying to, trying to protect somebody, I know. Who is it, Lum? Come clean or I'll throw you in the calaboose now. This is aiding and abetting the criminals. This is what all it is, and that's again the law. Yes, it is, Lum. You better confess before you get yourself in trouble. There ain't nobody going to rob nothing that I know of. I just... Come find out with that gun now, Grandpa. Throw up your hands, Dad. Blame it. You're under a arrest. I'll uh, third degree it you admit to it if it takes me all night. Take that gun off me, Grandpa, before I take it away from you and hit you on top of the head with it. Get to slinging that thing around here, and the first thing you know, it'll go off and hurt somebody. Put it up. Well, ain't no cartridges in it. Besides, I'm the law, and it's up to me to investigate such things. Well, there ain't nothing to investigate. I just said if there was going to be a robin, you wouldn't know it sitting back here in this feed room. Now, get on up to the front of the store there, Abner, and pay attention to business. Yeah, give me them checkers, Grandpa. No, wait a minute. Sit down, Grandpa. You don't have to go. 
I want to talk to you a minute. A little private matter. Go on up to the front, Abner. Well, I'm going. I'm going. What was Kate I'm wanting to see me about, Mom? Uh, just a minute till he gets out of here and set that checkerboard back up there. I was over there playing with Moe's Moose just now, and I think I run on to a new system. Here, you take the red ones. You mean you're going to play checkers? Yeah, but don't talk so loud. Well, I do know it. After you had all that to say about Abner playing him. Well, now, just see how we get along. How did that go? Mom. It was, uh... Mom. Oh, my goodness. Mom. Wait a minute. What you fellas doing back here? Huh? I'm explaining something to Grandpap here. Now, see, this checker here is your house, Grandpap, and the new highway is going to run right down here. What you standing there for, Abner? Well, Cedric's here, and he wanted to see us. Well, well, tell him to come on in. Well, I know you and Grandpa was talking, and I never knowed where you wanted to be. Right, come on in, Cedric. Come I'll in. finish explaining that deal to you directly, Grandpa. Well, is that new system you are talking about, Mom? Uh, yes, the uh, new highway system. Well, howdy, Cedric. What was you wanting? Oh, uh, uh, what you got there? Why, well, uh, it's a punch board I'm uh, selling chances on. Five, five cents a chance. Punch board? That's again the law, Cedric. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, Cedric, you're liable to get yourself in trouble on that. That's out and out gambling. Why, well, of course it is. Who put you up to doing such as that, Cedric? That don't sound like you. Well, I never knowed it was again the law. See, I ain't getting nothing out of it myself. Well, who's getting it then? Wait a minute. Maybe it's them same fellas Lum was talking about a minute ago. Who's behind this, Cedric? That's the fella we're after. Who's the big boss, the leader of the gang, the mastermind? That's the fella we want. I know it. I, 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 I'm, I run on a ticket to keep Pine Ridge clean, and I'm going to do it. Yeah, man. we ain't after you, Cedric. Just tell us who's getting the money off of them gambling devices. Who's the big boss? Yeah, come clean. Who is it, Cedric? Who is it? Uh, Grandma Wilkins. Grandma Wilkins? Is Grandma starting a crime wave here in Pine Ridge? I don't know. She just asked me if I'd carry it around town and see if I could sell all these chances for her. See, she ain't able to take in washings no more, and she never wanted to get out and beg for nothing. No. She says she can make money out of this thing. Enough to get something to eat. Well. Oh, well, wait a minute, then. That shorter comes under another head there. Grandma ain't trying to violate no law, you know that. No, no, I see now, yeah. Now, this is coming under the head of charities, sort of like rifling off something. Folks can give nickels to her and get a chance at a prize at the same time. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are the prizes, Cedric? Well, there's, uh, well, there's 400 chances on here at a nickel apiece. She says that'll bring in $20. Well. Wait a minute, let me figure that. 400 times a nickel. Yeah, something like that. And, and she's given out three prizes. Uh, first one is $5, and the second one is $3, and the third one is $2. Oh, giving the cash money, huh? Yes, Mom. Well. See, here's the three lucky numbers wrote up here at the top. She, she done got it wrote down there. See, number one, and number 100, and... Uh, Number 400 wins the prizes. Well? Well, I don't think that ought to be again the law, man. No, no, that makes it different, of course. Sort of, well, helping the needy, you might say. It's a heap better than begging. Well, I still don't see how she's going to make any money out of it, giving away all that money for prizes. Well, she takes in $20 and gives out $10 in prizes, Yeah, you? I can see through that. She'll make, uh, figure that in my head, I believe, uh, 20 from 10, or 10 from 20 leaves, uh, yeah, yeah, ten dollars is what she makes. Ten, huh? And I think Grandma ought to be allowed to do such as this, man. Well, it's all right with me. Whatever Abner says, he's the mayor. Oh, sure, law me. I don't care, no. Let's see, how many have you sold so far, Cedric? Uh, two. One to me and one to Snake Hogan's. <laughs> but we never win nothing. Well? Well, here, here's a nickel. I'll change it once. I ain't never win on one of these things, but I think I got a nickel here just to help Grandma. Yeah, here. Yeah, well, let's see. Oh, it don't make no difference. I don't care much for Dulu. It's a good cause. Yeah, try this one. Here, Cedric, I'll take one, too. Yeah. There's your nickel. I may as well change it once. You fellas, I reckon. Got change for a quarter, Cedric? Oh, uh, no, Mom. Ain't got but 20 cents. Well, that's enough. I owe you a nickel, or a wheel. Well, there's five nickels in a quarter, though. I know that this is a curious-looking thing i ever seen. Mom? <laughs> Looks just like a honeycomb. 
I reckon how they get them little things rolled up in there that way. And did I get one of them? Oh, <laughs> here it is. Sticking out the back here. Uh, here, Grandpa, here. here. These things are so little, they're hard to unfold. So what is that number there, Cedric? Your eyes is better than mine. Oh, my goodness, that's one of the winners, Mr. Lump. Number 100, that wins uh, $3. Well, wait a minute, this is a winner, too, number 400. Well, what do you know about that? <laughs> <laughs> this moment wins $5, according to this. $5, I don't think we both win, Lump. Why, that's out doing the thing I ever heard of. <laughs> this is number one I got, ain't that a winner? Uh, yeah, it says here it wins $2. Oh, goodness, that's all three of the prizes. <laughs> yeah, let's have the money, Cedric. That makes $10 yours. Well, I ain't got the money yet, though. I won't have the money until I sell all the rest of these punches off. Hey, oh, well, you can pay me any time. I ain't no hurry for it. I can't get over it. All three of us well, winning a prize. You can't sell the rest of them punches now, Cedric. The prizes has all been won. Why, that's right, ain't it? Yeah, instead of Grandma Wilkins making ten dollars, she's gonna lose that money. Why, sure she is. I know she ain't got it to lose, neither. Oh, no. Here, Cedric, take this board back over to Grandma and tell her it's again a law to run gambling devices in Pine Ridge. And we better fix up a box of groceries and take over there, Abner. Yeah. Hi, Grannies, I still ain't never went on one of them punch boards yet. Well, we hope this proves conclusively to Grandma Wilkins that crime doesn't pay. Mealtime drink in three million American homes presents your favorite radio friends, Lum and Abner. There's an old saying that runs, an hour of sleep before midnight is usually worth two hours after midnight. But here's a woman who says, Maybe it is worth it. But suppose you're like me and can't sleep. Suppose you always lie awake for hours after you go to bed. Well, in that case, I'd say there's just one thing to do. Try to find out what's causing that sleeplessness. It may be as simple a thing as coffee. For while many people can drink coffee without being kept awake, many others cannot. If you suspect that coffee is robbing you of sleep, switch to Postum and see if it doesn't make a difference. Postum does not contain caffeine, does not contain any stimulant that could possibly keep you awake. It's just a skillfully roasted blend of whole wheat and bran, delicately sweetened. And Postum is delicious to drink, with a smooth, mellow, rich flavor and a tempting aroma that fairly invites drinking. What's more, it's both easy to make and economical, costing less than one half cent a cup. Get Postum at your grocer's. Drink it instead of coffee if coffee's been keeping you awake, and see if you don't get a better night's sleep. Now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, now that all of Lum and Abner's outside interests have been disposed of, they've decided to devote all of their time to operating their Jotham Down store. During the past few weeks, the store has been neglected to such an extent that the stock has become very depleted and business is steadily falling off. As we look in on the little community today, Pine Ridge is enjoying the first touch of spring weather, and we find Grandpappy Spears over at the store talking with Abner. Listen. Oh, it just ain't no use to talk about it, Grandpap. I'd love to the worst way, love to, but I just can't get off. Couldn't do it, just couldn't do it at all, couldn't do it. Yeah, well, I just thought I'd mention it to you. Yeah, sure. sure. I hadn't thought nothing about it myself till a while ago, uh... Digging around out there in the garden, dug up a whole tomato can full of fish bait. Well, yeah, it's a pretty day for it, all right. Well, not only that, but the signs is right, Abner. I was looking at the almanac last night. Couldn't ask the moon to be better for it. No, no. Talking to the Macmillan boys, too. They was out yesterday. They was, huh? They come out of the place along the shank of the evening there. Had a string of white pitch. It'd make your mouth water. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. I do love them things, too. I love them. Oh, yeah. And it's fun catching them, too, when they're biting. Now, whereabouts did they go, uh, the uh, Macmillan boys? Oh, uh, they're down on Big Eddy. They say in lower end of the eddy there. Uh-huh. Well, there's lots of them in that hole of water, all right. Oh, yeah. 
And they ought to be biting good today, for they said they throwed a half a sack of cracked corn in there. They did, huh? And just about be getting soft enough for them to eat good today. Oh, my, yes, 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 Lord, me, if they done that, yeah. Bound you a body couldn't stir them with a stick down no, there. No, you have to get behind a tree to make a hook. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir, if I could just get off or, uh, get on out of here, Grandpap. Dad, blame it, come over here and get me unsatisfied with myself. <laughs> I don't know of there one thing I'd rather do than to be sitting down there on that riverbank this evening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that big oak, you know, it leans out there with the water, right there at the fur end of the hole. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, the fella can sit there and lean back again that tree and sunny sail. <laughs> Watch that cart bobbling. <laughs> well, see now, right there by that tree is where they catched all them pierce yesterday, they said. I knowed it, I knowed it, I knowed it. That, blame it, that's my favorite right place, right? Yes, sir, that's one reason I thought about you. I knowed you always loved to sit out there. Are you sure that the signs is right, Grandpa? Oh, they couldn't be better, Abner. Looked it up, you yeah, looked it up myself. Uh, ain't you got an almanac around here? I'll show you. No, no, no. I take it up to the place for Elizabeth. She wanted to look up the signs to see when to plant. Yeah. Well, they're right. I'll guarantee you that. Uh -huh. And the dogwoods in bloom. That's sign enough they're biting right there. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. That blame it. I wish you hadn't have come by here, Grandpa. Well, why don't you ask Mom? He'd let you go up No, there. no, 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 no. I dare some do it, Grandpa. Dare some do it. He'd throw a fit. Throw a fit right here in the store. Would I? Oh, me. I would love to have a mess of them things, too. Yeah, I'm going anyway. I tell you, I could bring you some back, I reckon, Abner. I know I'll catch more than we can eat the way they're biting. Yeah, well, that's nice, but... <laughs> Well, that ain't hit, though. <laughs> I just love to catch him myself. Mm, doggies. I can see that cart going under now. <laughs> One of them rascals scooting off with him. <laughs> yeah, all them things, right? <laughs> oh, yes, they do, yeah. And there's a few bass hangs around that old tree we saw. Yes, yes, yeah, I saw them myself. Better ought to get a right smart chance of sun pitch along there at the mouth of Shack Creek, there where that clear water empties into the river. Oh, yeah, yeah, bound to be. Bound to be, yes, sir. But, uh, Mom just wouldn't listen to it for a minute. Well, it right. won't hurt nothing to ask. No, you. no, no, ain't no use now. We shaking hands this morning. Said we was going to attend to business from now on. Been fooling around here, digging up these dinosaurs and making moving pictures and one thing or another till... Our business here in the store just went down something wonderful. Well, can't Lum wait on the trade? Well, oh, yeah, sure. There ain't nothing going on as far as that goes, but, well, he's just the idea of bringing up the subject. I know what he'd say. Claim that I weren't taking the right altitude towards the store here. Yeah, well, of course you know what's best. Thought maybe you could tell him you had to go somewhere this afternoon and not tell him where you were. Going. Oh, no, going. no, 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 I wouldn't do nothing like that. If I was going fishing, I'd get, uh, where could I tell him I was going? Well, I don't know. I hadn't thought nothing about it, hardly. No. Uh, when was you aiming on leaving, Grandpa? I thought we'd go right away. I got the fishing poles and the tackle all ready over there at the place. You yeah, have, huh? We could take some vittles along with it, just cook and eat right there on the bank of the river, sort of. Oh, I'd love it. I would love it, yes, sir. I can smell that grub cooking right now. <laughs> yeah, it might cook up some of the fish. Now, wait a minute. There's Rome coming out there in front there now, Abner. Huh? Him and Cedric. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can what they're standing out there with their heads together about now. No telling. Cedric, more like they want to borrow some money from him. Where I can see I'm um, shaking his head there. Yeah, well, what are you going to do, Abner? Better make up your mind before he gets in here. Well, why can I tell him I'm going, Grandpa? Oh, tell him some of Elizabeth's real age is sick. Well, ain't none of them lives close enough for me to get to him this afternoon. And he knows I wouldn't care much if there was no way. No, no, uh, better just... Mind that, mind that. Here he comes. Dad, blame it all. Why does that fella have to work? Well, I'll tell you about it, Cedric, and let you know. Uh, where will you be at? Uh, well, I'll call you and let you know. Hey, yeah, howdy, fella. Hey, come in, Mom. Come in. Yeah, howdy, Mom. Beautiful day, ain't it? Just like spring outside. Fact is, it is spring. 
You fellas ought to be sitting out there on the porch getting some of that sunshine. Oh. Yes, sir. Just walking up out there. Oh. Oh. No good all in. Oh. What's but... oh. the matter with you, Abner? Oh, I don't know. Just thought I may have said something. Oh, you was all right a while ago. Yeah, yeah. And it just hit him all of a sudden. Oh. Oh. Yeah. oh. Something yet, I think. Oh. You ain't been running your hand down that pickle barrel again, have you? No, 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 it ain't there. Oh, maybe I better go home for the rest of the day, Lom. Well, all right. I sort of aiming on, you know, nothing. Uh, aiming on what? Why, nothing. I was just aiming on you staying here while I got out and done a little more collecting this afternoon, but... Oh, well... I can stay, I reckon. I just thought... No, no, if you're ailing. Wouldn't want you to sit around here trying to drag around and wait on a trade. I, I can stay here. Do the collecting tomorrow. No, no, now we're needing to get that money in. No, uh, you go ahead, Lum. I'll stay. No, it'll wait, it'll wait. I can get out tomorrow and collect. Well, I think I'll feel better after a little, maybe. Well, all right. Of course, we are needing some stuff here in the store, and we can't buy it till we get out and get some of these collections in. No, sure, sure, I know. I wasn't even thought about it. Er, uh, well, I'm feeling all right now, thank you. Well, now, Abner, if you're sick, you better go on over to the place and lay down. No telling what it might develop into. Yeah, you do whatever you think best, Abner. I think he just overdone himself last week, Lum, digging so much over there for that dinosaur. Yeah, might have. Does your back hurt you, Abner? Uh... Yeah, yeah, I, I believe right there is where it's at. Uh, I never know it. Yeah, my back, that's what it's Why at. couldn't you just close the store up, Lum? There ain't nothing going on no way. Well, I... Well, we could, I guess, for as that goes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea, Grandpap. Yeah, you go on over home and lay down and rest this afternoon, Abner, and I can get out and do that collecting. We just close up the store for the day. Well, I hate to be laying up there in bed knowing you're out... Walking yourself to death, trying to collect up some of these dead. Oh, shucking, shucking. Be good for me. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead. I'll lock up, Abner. Well, all right. You just insist, Mom. Uh, Grandpap, I'll get you to walk home with me if you don't mind. Well, I'm feeling I might fall right in the middle of the road before I get there. Yeah, sure, I'll walk home with you. Yeah. Here, give me your arm. Yeah, thank you. And now, don't worry about me, Lom. You need mice to come over there or call up to find out how I am, but I think I'll be all right quick as I get laid down. Well, I couldn't hardly get in touch with you this afternoon, Abner, but... I see, I'll be out collecting, but I'll call you quick as I get back tonight. Well, good. Uh, uh, all right, Lum. It's so long. Yeah, I hope you get to feeling better. Well, I think I will. Huh. Granny, she oughtn't be walking that fast. Cheap, you think. Huh. Uh, <clears throat> Too, but I've decided to go with you. <laughs> yeah, Abner went home sick, and I'm just going to have to close up the store. Yeah. Yeah, I feel kind of bad about it, him home sick, but, but, well, I'm going anyway. Yeah, you get the fishing tackle and the bait, and I'll meet you there at the corner of Ezra Seastrunk's place. Why, I believe we better chance it down on Big Eddie, Cedric. Yeah. Yeah, down there where that big oak tree leans out over the river. That's my favorite spot. Uh, Granny, if they ain't biting there today, we couldn't get them no place. All right, Cedric, see you directly. Goodbye. And we imagine there'll be quite a surprise meeting down the river this afternoon. The makers of Postum, the favorite mealtime drink in three million American homes, present your favorite radio friends, Lum and Abner. Hollywood makeup experts can change the color of your hair, the shape of your eyes and nose, the whole shape of your face if necessary. But all their skill and experience can't make a grouchy disposition a cheerful one. Only you yourself can do that by finding out the cause of that grouchiness. Perhaps it's indigestion. A good many people suffer from indigestion, and often it's caused by coffee. 
For while many people can drink coffee and not suffer from indigestion, there are many others who cannot. If you suspect that coffee disagrees with you, try drinking Postum instead of coffee and see if it doesn't make a difference. Postum contains no caffeine nor any other stimulant that could possibly upset your system. It's made entirely from whole wheat and bran, specially roasted and slightly sweetened. We know you'll enjoy the delightful aroma of Postum and the rich, dark color. And you'll certainly like Postum's distinctive, mellow flavor. So get some from your grocer tomorrow. And if coffee upsets your digestion, drink Postum with your meals instead of coffee and see if you don't feel better. And now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner are again devoting all of their time to operating their jot and down store. Lum has been busy for the past few days in an effort to collect some of the accounts due to the store that they might purchase new merchandise for their stock, which, because of their outside interest the past few months, has become very depleted. As we look in on a little community today, Lum is out collecting, and we find Abner alone at the store. Listen. It rang yourself off in the wall. I oh, wish these pesky the things have never been in there. Hello. Jot them down, store. Oh, howdy, Witter. All right, what was it you was needing? I don't know. It ain't nobody but me here, but I'll get it over there quick as Lom gets back. I don't know. He never said. Well, send one of the young'uns down after it, then, if you're in such a dreadful hurry for it. Well, couldn't they come after school? Oh, yeah. Well, we'll get it over there somewhere or other. What was it? Ain't got it. I don't know. We've been out of it for two or three weeks now. What else? Ain't got no number 60 in the white. Give it to you in the black. Well, thread's thread, ain't it? Uh-huh. Well, we just ain't got it. Well, I think we got a bucket or two back there. All right, bucket of lard. Is that all? Oh, uh, what else? No tomatoes. No, none of no kind. Well, now, listen, Witter, it's all right if you want to order this stuff, but don't try to tell us how to run our business. Well, if we could collect some of the money that we got out on our books, we could keep our stock up. No, I know you don't, but others around here does. Uh, was that all now? Oh, yes, some we got to... Uh, uh, just a minute, Witter. Scat, scat. Get down from there, dead blame it all. Uh, how much rice was you wanting? Five cents a pound, six pounds for a quarter. No, Mom, you have to buy a quarter's worth before you get it at that price. All right. Uh, is that all? Oh. Why, well, we've got some. I don't know how good they are. You can try. All right, just a minute. There's somebody coming. Oh, uh, come in, Grandpa. Hey, good morning, Abner. Good come morning. In. Just come over to see... Oh, excuse me. Never noticed you talking on the telephone. Well, do you want them potatoes or not, with her? Oh, uh, me. Oh, I'd make you a special price on them if you'd take them all. They're beginning to sprout off a bed here. Oh, about a bushel, I reckon. Make them to you for four bits. All right. Now, that's all, ain't it? All right, Witter, we'll get this stuff over as quick as we can. Oh, that's all right. Glad to do it. Glad. That's our motto. Service with a smile. Goodbye. It's at least take a beating this talk to that old woman. What's that pin on your back there, Abner? Well, I never paid no attention. April huh? Fool. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Catch you the April Fool. You forgot what day it is? Oh, for goodness sake, Grandpa. Now, I got enough worries about you coming out here with that kind of foolishness. What you got in that box there? Well, I hit some candy here. Or, or I'll tell you, Abner. I won't try to get it off on you. I hit some candy with soap on the inside of it. My woman made it up for me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, <Cheers. see> <laughs> 
Oh, I do know. Fella <laughs> never know it by looking at it. Oh, no, no, no. Look, it's like sure enough chocolate. <laughs> oh, here, cool them all right. Go on down to the barbershop, Jackie, and catch a bunch of them down there on it. <laughs> Don't get I wish Lom was here. I'd love to go with you. <laughs> Has he got over his mad spell yet about catching us down on the river fishing the day before yesterday? Oh, yeah, yeah, that never lasted long. I think he's more mad because I was sitting there on that old tree that leans out over the water more than anything else. That's his favorite place to fish, too, you know. <laughs> well, I told you at the time you had just as much on him as he did on you. He was supposed to be out collecting some of these bills that's on you here at the store. Oh, well, he he claims he was. Said he's on his way over to Uncle Henry Lunsford's place. Just happened to come along the river there and seen me when I was supposed to be homesick. Well, he's the first fella I ever seen out collecting with a fishing pole over his shoulder, I'll say that. I know that that's right, ain't it? Why, sure. And had a can of bait in his hand, too. Well, I wouldn't it? let him get by if that story happened. Oh, well, well, it's done over now. Best thing to do is forget it, I reckon. <laughs> we just both catch one another. That's what we've done. Hey, well, we got the fish, I'll say that. Oh, I never seen the like of them. I believe fishing gets better around here every year. I know last year you like, well, there's long now. Yeah, I just noticing. What's he limping about there? Huh? Looks like he's got a game leg the way he's hobbling along there. I don't know. He walked off all right a while ago. Uh, what's the matter with your leg, Lom? Nothing. Well, it looks like he's limping there. Oh, yeah, he hits my foot. Bunch of these smart alecks with their April Fool frames. Well, what, what happened? Oh, I... Uh, well, thought his life ain't worth a nickel down in town there now. I was walking along in front of the blacksmith shop there and seen a paper sack laying in the road and hauled off and kicked it like a feller will. Some idiot had put a rock in it and I might not have broke my foot. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've been catched on that myself. <laughs> well, I know better. Just forgot what day it was. Yeah, natural. And Caleb Weehunt and that bunch was hiding on the inside of the shop there watching me. They were. Could I hear them laugh for two miles? <laughs> I don't see nothing so dad blame funny about a fella crippling himself up. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, same as children's game. Some of these fellas around here just never will grow up. What you got in that box, Grandpa? Oh, just some candy my woman made, um. I'm taking it down to my nephew, Luke. Well, if it's anything I do love, it's homemade candy. Yeah. Granny, Luke ain't gonna be able to eat that old box for is he? Well, I don't know. I just... Oh, I reckon I could spare you one piece if you want it. Yeah, now, wait a minute. Now, don't you eat that, Lom. That's got soap on the inside of it. Soap? Oh, uh, April Fool can it. Yeah. Well, I'll be dead blamed, Grandpap, and you was agging me into eating some of it. I thought you'd outgrow the sit you had. I weren't agging you, Lom. You asked for it yourself. Besides, I never made it for you, feller. I was going to get that bunch down there at the barbershop on it. Well, you're going to have to be pretty smooth, ain't it, Grandpap? They pulled all kinds of stunts on one another down there this morning. They have, huh? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Old Sleepy Jim was sitting up there in the barber chair dozing a while ago, and the boys put a hot foot on him. <laughs> 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 he put some of that paste, that paste shoe polish, you know, put it on the sole of his shoe and set it afar. <laughs> right now, I had a runaway with himself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they might be onto that candy stunt, Grandpa. For I know last year, Moe's Moots had a sack full of them marshmallows candy. With quinine on it, did a flour or sugar, whatever it is. <laughs> I couldn't get that taste out of my mouth for a week. Oh, that bunch of did everything. On my way over here just now, I come by Dick Huddleston's store, and there was a pocketbook laying there on the porch. <laughs> oh, you never <laughs> fell for that old bromide, did you, Lord? No, of course I never. No reason there's a bunch standing inside there just waiting for me to pick it up. Why, sure, natural, natural. So I just made out as if I never even seen it. He did, huh? Yeah. <laughs> then after I passed, I hollered back, April Fool at him. <laughs> just turned the joke on them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, who was it, Mom? Oh, I don't know. I never even looked inside the store, but I know there was somebody fixing a jerk of string the minute I've been over to pick oh, it up. Sure, sure, oh, sure, sure. Oh, yeah, that's a whole Tell you what we might do with that candy grand vet. Might take it down there to the blacksmith shop and put it on them. Yeah. I'd love to see old Caleb get a mouthful of that. <laughs> I know in reason he was the one that put that yeah, rock well, in Well, now, wait thing. a minute, old Lom. Now, don't you go running off here. And I've got an order here to take over to the Widder Abernathy. Widder Abernathy? Yeah, she called for a bunch of stuff. We's out of half of what she's wanting, though. No. You know, we just got to do something about it, too, Lom. There's some things we're needing awful bad here. Well, I know it, Abner. I know it, but we can't buy it till we get the money to pay for it. No, no. Don't get it. 
we could just raise about $50. We could get some of the main things we're needing, like sugar and flour. And... Yeah, sure, but where are you going to find $50 around this town? I don't know. That's what I've been trying to do this collecting for. Yeah. Cash money is just something scarce around here now this time of year. Everybody's busy with their crops. About the only cash she is floating around here now is what money these tourists brings in. Yeah, sure. I've seen a carload of them down there by the filling station a while ago. Strangers. Well, I do. Wait a minute, fella. Here comes Cedric Lee Hunt. Maybe we can get off some of this candy on him. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Oh, yeah. He's a good and he'll fall for anything. Yeah. <laughs> Just give him one piece, though. He's goose enough to eat it soap and all. Yeah, Make I don't healthy. believe he'd pay no attention to it the way he loves you. <laughs> Uh, come in, Cedric. Yeah, come on back, Cedric. Just set it there where he can see it, Grandpa. Didn't there one of you fellas lose a pocketbook, did you? Pocketbook? No. Now, no. Now, let's see that, Cedric. <laughs> for goodness sake. How about you know where you picked that up? Right there in front of Dick Huddleston's store. Yes, Mom, and I can't find out who it belongs to. Been asking all over town. Oh, why, of course not, Cedric. <laughs> it don't belong to nobody. That's an April Fool prank. Why, sure. I seen it there myself a while ago and wouldn't pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I can't find out who it belongs to, do I get to keep it? Why, sure. I reckon if you want it, I don't know what you'd want with an old pocketbook like that for, though. Well, don't care nothing about the pocketbook, but there's there's $63 in it. That's what I wanted. Huh? $63. Well, I'll be dead. And Lum probably understands now why they call this All Fool's Day. The makers of Postum. The favorite mealtime drink in three million American homes presents your favorite radio friend, Lum and Abner. Did you ever run across a woman you hadn't seen for a couple of years, and after you'd spent a few hours with her and left her, did you ever have reason to say to yourself, I never saw such a change in a woman. Why, she used to be so cheerful and happy-go-lucky. And now she flares up over the least thing. Well, you can be sure there's a reason for that irritability and jumpiness. And perhaps that reason is coffee. For though it's true that many people can drink coffee without becoming nervous and jittery, it's also true that many others cannot. If you suspect that coffee may be setting your nerves on edge, try switching to Postum. Postum contains no caffeine or any other stimulant that could make you nervous and jittery. It's a combination of whole wheat and bran, delicately sweetened and roasted to a tempting golden brown. A warm, satisfying drink with a rich, delicious flavor and tantalizing aroma. What's more, Postum is both easy to make and economical, costing only one half cent a cup. So get Postum from your grocer tomorrow, and if coffee upsets your nerves, drink Postum with your meals instead and see if you don't feel less jumpy. Feel more relaxed. And now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Lum and Abner are solely in need of funds with which to replenish the reduced stock of merchandise in their jot and down store. Sales have fallen off to such an extent that the old fellows are finding it difficult to continue operating the business. As we look in on the little community today, Lum is out trying to collect some of their outstanding accounts, and we find Dick Huddleston over at the store talking with Abner. Listen. Well, I don't think that, Abner. My business has been pretty good here lately. I know he's ours, ain't. He ain't been doing enough to pay us to sweep out hardly. Of course, we're out of so much stuff that we're losing a lot of business that way. I know that. Yes, you are, Abner. I've had a lot of people mention that. You're going to lose all the trade you've got here, too, if you don't start keeping this stock up. Well, we can't, Dick. We've been so broke, we ain't had the money to buy nothing with. Wholesale houses is all on a cash base now. Every time we get a little money ahead, why, Lum wants to invest it in some other kind of business. And, well, the store just has to suffer for it. Yeah, well, there's your trouble right there. Just like that moving picture business you got into. I tried to tell you at the time that that wouldn't work. I know it, I know it. 
No, if you fellas would put your money back into the store here, why, you'd soon have this place back to where it was, where you could make some money out of it. Yeah, well, that's what we're aiming to do now. Every time we get a little money ahead and just take it and buy more merchandise. Er, wait a minute, wait a minute, here it comes from. He's been out collecting, trying to get in all we can. Well, now, there's another thing, Abner. If I was you fellas, I'd cut out this credit business, too. Well, we've tried to. Tried to go on a cash base. Just looks like there's so many people around here just ain't got their cash money to do with. We'll get right back into it before we know it. Yeah, I know. It's pretty hard to turn them down sometimes. Well, oh, howdy, Lum. Yeah, howdy, howdy. Oh, howdy, Dick. <laughs> Couldn't see who you was. Or the sun blinded, I reckon. Hey, did you have any luck, Lum? Yeah, yeah, a little. Collected that eighteen dollars off of Grandpa Masters. Well, his government check come in. Uh huh. Uh, how about old man Rollins? No, no, I got a promise out of him though. He's looking for some money from his boy in Memphis. Said he'd pay it quick as it come. Yeah, he's been looking for that check for years. I was just telling Abner here, Lum, I think you fellas are making a big mistake on this credit business here. Well, you ain't telling me a thing that I don't already know, Dick. And the more I get out here and traits all over this country trying to collect it, the better I know it, too. Bet I walk 15 miles a day. Yeah, and there's a lot of it we never will get. Well, now, there's the trouble with it right there. And some of them don't even try to pay it. Well, what are you going to do, Dick? They come in here and crying around that they ain't got nothing to eat on the place and the no. children's hungry. Yeah, sure. Folks you've grown up with, you just can't turn them down. Well, you've just got to make a rule. Cash, huh? Well, we've got rules. We've been on a cash base here for years. There's a sign right there. It's hung there for five or six years. Strictly cash, no credit. This means you. And there's another back there on the back wall, one of them horse cars, strictly cash. Well, I'll be dead blame. I'd plumb forgot about them things being there. <laughs> Just hung there so long, I don't never pay no attention to them no more. No, and nobody else does, neither. Says this means you, though. Yeah, well, now, that part there might get them mixed up, Mom. It ought to say this means me. You? No, me. That you in there makes it sound like it's somebody else when you're reading it. Well, that's the way you always see them wrote, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all right, that part. The whole trouble is that you just don't stick to it. It's up to you fellas now. They'll buy stuff on credit as long as you'll sell it that way. Well, I think they'll all pay it eventually. Uh, Our trouble is we're needing the money right now. Around crop gathering time, we'll have plenty of money. They ain't none of them trying to be unhonest or beat us out of it. They all told me they'll pay it if they had it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I know one thing. I've been a whole lot better than all since I've been on a cash basis down there. Well, that's just it. There's just two stores in town this way. One of us has got to let stuff out on a credit to take care of them folks that ain't got the cash. <laughs> well, here, I better be getting on over and tend to my own business instead of over here trying to tell you fellas how to run yours. Now, no, no, we appreciate it, Dick, and you're just right about it. The only thing, we just don't seem to be able to do it. Oh, well, I think everything will work out all right, Long. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've been in worse shape than this, I reckon. <laughs> Folks have got to eat, and as long as they do, we're bound to get some of the business. Yeah, if we've got anything in here to sell them. Yeah, you ought to keep stock up here a lot better. There's a lot of your customers trading over at my store now just because they can't get what they want over here. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll see you fellas later. Come over and loaf with me. Yeah, we will, Dick, and you come back. Yeah, so long, Dick. Oh, me. Granny's, I'm tart. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What a fragile. Or to a friend. Oh. Here, let me slip these shoes off. The feet is killing me. Eighteen dollars, huh? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I do guess let's call the wholesale house right now, Lum, and just buy what we can with it. Yeah, we're needing so much stuff, it ain't going to go very far. No, no. Wish there was some way we could invest that $18 and make about four or five times that much with it right quick. Now, don't start that now, Lum. We ain't going into no other kind of business. I know what I just said. I wish there was. I never said go into nothing. Oh. Just reading the other day about all these people that bought them sweepstake tickets. That couldn't have been us, could it? No, I don't think so. I ain't had no tickets to nothing that I know of. I mean, I wished it could have been us. Why? 
Well, they just win about $150,000 pieces, all. For the land sake. Well, how much is land tickets? Oh, about 4 or $5 is all, I think. And they get back $150,000 on them? According to the paper. Well, uh, uh, that sounds like a good deal to me, Mom. Yeah, now, I'll go in on that. Yeah, yes, sir. I'll well, you up well on everybody that. that buys one don't get that. There's thousands and thousands of people that don't win nothing. Oh, well, and well, right there is where the catch to that is, Lom. Oh, yeah. Sure, I know it. It's just out now gambling. Sort of like rifling off something. Yeah, well, I just don't want no part of it then. No, no. Just about lose our eighteen dollars is what we do, and then we wind up with nothing. Well, I never meant for us to buy none. I wouldn't think of such a thing. Besides, I asked Mose Moose and he says it's done over now anyway. Yes, huh? Yeah, what I meant, we might be able to find something that's a sure thing that don't cost much to go into. Yeah, well, there ain't no business nowadays that don't cost much to go into. Let's go ahead and order that stuff now before we spend that money on something else, Lom. Oh, me, of all the things we're needing around here. Needing flour and a sack of sugar and lard. Out of baking soda, too, and potatoes, broom, and tobacco. Well, that eighteen dollars ain't gonna buy all that stuff. I can tell you that right now. Well, no, I know, but we can get some of the main things we're needing. It's just got the worst, just downright embarrassing whenever somebody comes in and calls for something. Yeah, I know, I know. Like a while ago, Jim Williams and his wife was in here wanting a long list of stuff. Jim, whistling Jim. Yeah, they is in here to buy... I never even knowed he was married. Well, he weren't till this morning. Went into the county seat and met her to train and married her. They been fighting to one another. Yeah, I never even knowed about it. <laughs> and appears to be a right nice sort of a woman, too. But she ought to be. He give $25 for her. Give $25 for her? Yeah, that's what he claims. Ordered her from a... Matrimonial bureaus. Oh. And that's what they charged him to locate her. Well, Granny, I wish we didn't know what he, he's looking for a while. I'd have scared him up one for a heap less than that. <laughs> $25. <laughs> and I believe she might be worth it, too. She looks stout enough to do field work. Yeah. Yeah, claims to be an uncommonly good cook and appears to thank the world and all of Jim. Well, in fact, she, she said she chose him out of 28 pictures that were sent to her, pre to her. 28 others, huh? Yeah, that's what she said. And he's got hate to saw the rest of them if she picked out old whistling Jim. <laughs> <laughs> 28 of them, uh, at $25 a head. And he's that outfit must be making some money. 28 times 25 is, 20, uh, must be an awful lot. Yeah, well, Jim said he got a whole bunch of pictures of women folks, too, looking for husbands. They got to pay $25, too. That's uh, $50 a couple they get when they match them up. For like. the land sake. And don't have to do no work at all. Now, there is a business, you know. <laughs> Just sit there and get them started writing to one another, and they do the rest. And they get $50 for starting out. Yeah. Might not all clear profit, I think. Why, sure it is. And they ain't got nothing to invest, neither. Wouldn't take no money to start a bit. Uh, and he'd wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's it, Evan. <laughs> That's it right there. Huh? We're going to open up a matrimonial bureau. Oh, now, Lum, we can't do that. Yes, now. we can. Of course we can. We'll, we'll take this $18 and put some advertisements in these newspapers around over the country and start our own matrimonial bureau right here in Pine Ridge. Well, good for old Whistling Jim. Uh, Granny, he give us the best idea we've ever had. And again, a new and more glamorous enterprise forces the Jot and Down store into the background. The makers of Postum. The favorite mealtime drink in three million American homes presents your favorite radio friends, Lum and Abner. The night seems practically endless when you lie there turning and tossing restlessly. You hear the footfalls of every late homecomer, the baying of every dog. 
the shriek of a distant train whistle, and, as night drags on into morning, the raucous crowing of a rooster. If only you knew what was causing that sleeplessness. Well, did you ever stop to think that it might be coffee? But while many people can drink coffee without being kept awake, many others cannot. If you suspect that coffee is robbing you of sleep, try drinking Postum instead. Postum contains no caffeine, no stimulant of any kind that could possibly destroy your rest. It's made only of whole wheat and bran, slightly sweetened and roasted to a tempting golden brown. A steaming, delicious drink with a mellow, full-bodied flavor and tantalizing aroma. One sniff, one taste, and I promise you, you and Postum will be friends for life. So get Postum from your grocer tomorrow. Drink it every mealtime, even late at night if you wish. And if coffee's been keeping you awake, see if you don't sleep better after switching to Postum. And now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. After several days spent in an effort to collect some of the accounts due the Jotham Down store, Lum succeeded in raising $18. As this amount is not sufficient to buy all the merchandise needed for the store, the old fellow has now conceived the idea of using the money to open a matrimonial bureau in Pine Ridge, from which he has hopes of reaping great profits. As we look in on our old friends today, we find Lum and Abner down at the store. Lum is writing their first advertisements for the newspaper. Listen. Now... Yeah. Uh, see how this is sounding. Edmund? Uh-huh. Uh, this is what I'm going to put in the county seat paper. See what you think of it. Oh, I don't care nothing about hearing it, Mom. I don't want to have a thing to do with it now. Now, that ain't no way to act, Abner. Or stand around and selling like a possum. Well, now, we tried running a matrimonial bureau once and never made no money out of it. Well, we would have if we'd have stayed with it. Our trouble was we got off on something else. Well, now, that's just the trouble, too. We don't stay with nothing. That's the reason I want to take that $18 we got and buy stuff we're needing for the store. Well, Abner, that $18 ain't going to buy enough stuff to help none. That's what I'm trying to do, make enough money to stock up the store with. This advertisement ain't going to cost much. Let's try it for a while. If it ain't a success, we can get out of it. Yeah, but our eighteen dollars will done be gone then. I tell you what I'll do. If you'll go in on this thing and do your best to make a success out of it, I'll make you the president of the company. Oh well, I don't care nothing. President. Yes, sir. Just think of how nice that'll be when we get to making a lot of money. <laughs> You sitting there in a great big office with your feet propped up on a desk, smoking a big cigar. Yeah, only trouble. Well, I don't like cigars. You can smoke your pipe. Oh, well, I could learn to like them, I reckon. Well, that part of it don't make no difference, no way. Think of the good we'll be doing. Must be thousands and thousands of nice men and women that we could get married if they could find the right company. Yeah, yeah. Why, there'll be happy married couples that'll thank us for the rest of our lives for getting them acquainted with one another. Yeah, sure, I hadn't thought about that. No, it's the finest thing at all. Yeah, make me president, huh? Yes, sir. Well, I don't know, I might try to rap if you want to. Well, just suit yourself, I don't want to punch you none. You know best. Recollect, though, we're liable to lose the $18 we're putting in it. Oh, no, I don't think so, Mom. And what's $18 anyway? Well, we could buy stuff we're needing for the store here. What? Wouldn't be a drop in the bucket with all the stuff we're needing here. No, maybe not. And besides, think of the good we can do. Finding husbands and wives for folks. Yeah, all right. You're bound and determined to do it. I ain't the kind of a feller to hold out again my partner. Your judgment ought to be as good as mine. You say do it, all right, I'll go in with you. Well, good. Good for you. <laughs> uh, my dog is here. Uh, huh? Uh, uh, nothing. I, I thought we <laughs> sort of got ourselves mixed up, but I reckon not. No, I told you I'd do it. Give my consent. Yeah, I know. I, I know, no. Well, we better decide on this advertisement so we can call it in there in time to get it in this afternoon's paper. Yeah, yeah, I think we ought to get started as quick as we can, sure. Do you long for a companion? Are you tired of making your own living? Yeah, but it just looks like... Would you like to have a home and far side of your own? Well, I got that place over there now, but... Hey, up for a minute. I'm trying to read this advertisement to you. 
Oh, <laughs> well, I love it. This is for the women folks. Well, ain't you going to advertise for an old man? Yeah, but I'm going to write another ad for them. This is just to get the women interested. Oh, oh. Would you like to marry a man of wealth and position? A man who can support you like a queen. A devoted husband who will shower you with expensive gifts, diamonds and furs. Well, now, Lom, you're going to get some of them that's already married unsatisfied with themselves. That's talking that way. I just hope Elizabeth don't see that. She'll more likely be right than herself. Don't let wash day be a drudgery. No more bending over a wash tub. No more dishwater hands. That sounds sort of like a soap flake advertisement. Well, that is where I got that part of it, but that'll peel to them. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Don't wait. Write it once and send your picture. Let a man of experience find you a life's companion. Man of experience? Yeah. Well, yeah. you ain't never had no experience. You ain't never been able to get yourself married, much less somebody else. Yeah, no, but... Well, they can be writing to you, can't you? You're married and you're the president. Yeah, 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 I can tell them. Sure, yes, sir, yes. And down here at the bottom in big letters, we'll have the name. Uh, which do you like the best, uh, Bureau of Lonesome Hearts or the Home Sweet Home Matrimonial Bureau? Well, I don't know hard enough. You got to decide on a name. Yeah, yeah. I thought some about calling it Cupid Headquarters, but I feared some folks might be too ignorant to know what Cupid's there. Uh, what are they? What are they? Don't you know what Cupid's there? No, I reckon not. Uh, Cupid dolls? No, Cupid's is them little fellas that go around shooting bows and arrows and folks' hearts. Indians? No, no, they fly around. They're about the size of children, except they got wings. Oh, well, I know I ain't never saw none of them in. Well, where do you find them? Every place. Cupid is everywhere and gets worse in June. Well, <laughs> Sort of like mosquitoes, huh? No. June is the month so many folks gets married in. You've heard of June brides? I've heard of June bugs. Well, anyway, Cupid is the one that's supposed to make you fall in love. They shoot you with them arrows and you're a goner. But they never have hit me, I reckon. No, me neither. I'm sure they did. You got married, didn't you? Yeah, I got married, but I ain't never been shot by no arrow. Yes, you have too, and you just never knowed it. You mean I was shot with an R and never knowed it? Well, Abner, that don't make no difference. Just forget about it. Let's go ahead and get this ad rope for the men folks. Catch one of them little varmints shooting at me. I'll swat him like he's a fly. That's what I'll do. I thought for a special deuce, men, to the first couple, we might offer a free marriage license and wedding ceremony performed by just as a piece of marriage. I know that that's right, ain't it? You can do the marrying yourself. I sure. After this, every couple that uh, we bring together, I'll do the marrying and get $5 for that. Yeah. But that ain't company money, though. That's my own business on the side. Uh-uh. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. That's all right. Sure. Let's see now. How do we start this thing out? Yeah, ought to have something to attract their attention there. Yeah. I think we might put in big letters right across the top here. 1,000 men wanted. <laughs> that ought to get them. Special with so many folks out of work now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what kind of jobs you gonna have for them, though, after you get them? Oh, that's just to attract their attention. Oh, oh, oh. We can go on with the rest of the advertisements. Uh, yeah. Well, I've got part of it wrote here. Yeah, huh? Well, yeah. let me see what you got there. It says, are you single? Do you enjoy the comforts of a home and all that it means? Well. A far side away from the cares of the outside world. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. How would you like to return home after a hard day's work, not to a cold, dark room, but to a bright and cheery home of your own? Oh, yeah, yeah, now that ought to get them here. With a loving wife standing in the door while the children run out to the gate to greet you. Well, <laughs> oh, that's sounding fine, now. <laughs> Yes, sir. Now, that ought to get them interested, all right. Uh, what else you got? Well, that's all. I got to put some more in there, I reckon. Uh, you ought to have something in there about home-cooked dead alarms. That, that ought to appeal to a fellow. That's yeah, right, ain't it? Yes, sir. Let's see how I put that. Uh huh? Uh, instead of eating around at cafes or doing your own cooking... Yeah, yeah, that's sounding good, that home yeah. cooking. Wait a minute. Huh? Come home to a table piled high with good hot vittles. Oh, <laughs> doggy, that makes me hungry just to hear it. Oh, Fried yeah. chicken and hot biscuits. <laughs> yeah. 
Don't we lie, I mean. Oh, yes, it is. It is that, yeah. yeah what else can we put in there? Make well, let's see, see now. Oh, uh, uh, well, I see, uh... How about sewing? A woman does sewing for her. Yeah, darn it. That's a man's word right there. Somebody to do your mending for you. Yeah, yeah. Get that down. Yeah, that's it. That's good. A devoted wife to share your joys and sorrows. Yeah, yeah, put that in there. Put that in. If this is the kind of a life you long for, write at once to the... And we still got to decide on a name. Yeah, yeah. Put yeah, the name down. Oh, yeah, that's sounding fine, Mom. That's a dangerous. One thousand men wanted. Are you single? Do you enjoy the comforts of a home and all that it means? <laughs> a far side, away from the cares of the outside world. Oh, that's fine. How would you like to return home after a hard day's work? Not to a cool, dark room, but to a bright and cheery home of your own. With a loving wife standing in the door... While the children run out to the gate to greet you. Yeah, bless little lady. I would have been a preacher, girl. Oh, well, bless her heart. Yes, you are, Lama. And instead of eating around at cafes and doing your own cooking, come home to a table piled high with good hot vittles, hot dogs. <laughs> now, that's the part right there in my life. <laughs> Somebody to do your mending for you. Yeah. A devoted wife to share your joys and sorrows. If this is the kind of a life you long for, write at once. And I, Granny's, I'm going to do it, too. Huh? You're going to do yes, it? Yes, sir. I'm going to be the first customer for a matrimonial bureau. I haven't I done made up my mind? I never knowed before married life was a dead brain. Well, it looks as though Lemon Abner's matrimonial bureau is getting off to a flying start. Makers of Postum, the favorite mealtime drink in three million American homes, present your favorite radio friend, Lum and Abner. Have you ever noticed how people love to get together around the table over a steaming hot drink and talk things over? I'll bet you've solved many a problem that way yourself. And Postum is the sort of hot drink that fits right into that picture. It looks so good. It smells so fragrant and appetizing. And when you taste that smooth, mellow Postum flavor, when you feel that satisfying warmth tingling through your veins, well, you just naturally feel relaxed and sociable. And that's true whether it's Postum cereal or instant Postum. For there are two kinds, you know. Postum cereal is the kind you boil or percolate, the same as you do coffee. It's fine if you want to serve Postum to the whole family, or if you like to keep a pot on the back of the stove ready to serve a hot drink at any time. The other kind, instant Postum, comes in especially handy when there's just one member of the family drinking Postum. Because instant Postum is the quick kind, you make it right in the cup. Just put in a teaspoon of instant Postum, add hot water, cream and sugar to taste, and there it is. Or if you prefer... When you're making an in-between mealtime drink for one of the youngsters, for instance, prepare instant postum with hot milk instead of hot water for extra nourishment and extra deliciousness. Begin tomorrow to enjoy this wholesome, delectable mealtime drink. Ask your grocer for postum cereal or instant postum. And now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner are now operating the Lonesome Heart Matrimonial Bureau. The old fellows used the $18 Lum collected for the Jotham Down store to place an ad in newspapers throughout the surrounding territory day before yesterday and are now anxiously awaiting letters from prospective customers. As we look in on the little community today, Lum has gone over to the post office for the mail. And we find Abner alone at the store talking over the telephone. Listen. Well, that's what they all charge, Sister Simpson. That's what Whistling Jim Williams paid for that woman he ordered from the matrimonial bureaus. Twenty-five dollars. Well, they ought to be worth it if they're worth anything. Uh Uh-huh. Well, now, if we don't find you a husband, why, you don't owe us nothing. Mom? Oh, no, no, we can't guarantee him. 
But we just send you pictures, and then you pick out the one you like the looks of and start writing to him. And, well, if you decide he's the one you want, why, give us $25 and he's yours. Er, just a minute, Sister Simpson. Uh, here comes Lum now. I'll let him explain it to you. Uh, just a minute. Uh, come here, Lum, and talk to Sister Simpson. Sister Simpson? Yeah, she's wanting to know how... Uh, tell her I ain't got time to talk to her right now, I haven't. We got some letters here to the matrimony bureau. I want to read them first. <laughs> well, uh, that's what she's wanting to find out about. She wants us to find her a man. And I can't seem to make her understand how our matrimony bureau works. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll talk to her. I never know she was wanting to get married. Yeah, <laughs> here. She's seen our advertisement in the paper, she said. <laughs> uh, Lonesome Hard Matrimony on Bureau. I can't even say that. Yeah, well, it'll take some time, I guess. Matrimony on Bureau, yes, Mom. I'll take that in. <laughs> this is Mom. Oh, probably well, I reckon. How are you, Sister Simpson? Sister Simpson. Ah. Uh-huh. Hate that old woman to pieces. Oh, well, we won't mention it to us old. You need to worry about that. It's all confidential. Don't want to yes, ma'am. Town, that's well, you send us a picture yourself, and we'll send it out to all the men customers that's looking for a wife, and then we'll send you any pictures of men folks that we get in, and then you can pick out the one you like. Send her a picture to somebody scared. Yeah, you, you can write to them and tell them all about yourself, and that way you'll get to writing backwards and forwards, and if you suit one another, why, you get married and owe us $25 apiece. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, ma'am, they both pay. Bad eyes to marry her. All right. Well, I don't know. We've got some letters here now that I ain't opened up yet. Oh, good. Might find somebody in there for you, you know. Yes, Mom, we will. All right, Sister Simpson. Yeah, send over the best picture you've got of yourself. One that was took a few years back wouldn't hurt nothing. A long time back would be better. Well, no, but I just... Uh, Baby picture. Well, I never meant that, but lots of times these photographers make folks look a heap older than they are, you know. <laughs> yes, Mom. All right, not at all, not at all. Goodbye. I know if we'll earn the twenty-five dollars if we ever find somebody for her, Mom. Oh well, I doubt if we do, but I couldn't tell her that. No, no. Uh, you say we got some letters already? Yeah, I've got three of them here. <laughs> Good <time. laughs> I told you this thing would go. Yeah. That's seventy-five dollars if we get them all three married all. Uh, wait a minute, 150 We get 25 for the man and 25 for the woman. Yeah, that's right. $50 a couple is what it is. And according to this handwriting, all three of these looks like they're from women folks. Well? See this pink envelope here? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's bound to be a woman. Oh. Yeah. Uh, from Broken Bow, Oklahoma. Well? Granny, let me open that in first. <laughs> oh, this is fun, man. Hope they all sent their pictures. Now, before we go any further, Abner, if I find somebody in here and marry him myself, I ain't going to pay the company no $25. Are you still aiming on getting married? Well, if I find the right one, I am. Uh-huh. I never stopped to think how nice it was to have a wife and a home and all that till I got to writing them advertisements for our matrimonial bureau. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it's all right with me, Lum, for you not to pay nothing. It won't be a dead loss for we'll get $25 from her anyway. Yeah, sure. Well, I don't know neither. It might not look right for one of the owners in a matrimonial bureau charging his wife $25 to marry him. Oh, well, no, I don't care. <laughs> I might not give that much to see you get married. Yeah, me too. <laughs> er, well, look at that. Is that her? I guess it is. For the land's sake. Granny, undoubtedly that ain't her. She looks like a hand. What does she say about herself there? Says I am a widow woman with five children and live on a farm near Broken Bow. Well. It has 40 acres of good rich land and a mortgage of $150 again. Oh. I am looking for a kind man with money. And all she's looking for is somebody to pay off that mortgage. Yeah, yeah. Anything I hate and despise is somebody that's just marrying for money. Yeah, law me. Ain't nobody going to pay off no $150 mortgage to marry her. I'll tell her that. Might as well just tear that letter up right now, Mom. Well, we can't use that. Send the picture out. She never tell. I'd have bet even money that nobody would have married Whistling Jim Williams, but they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see who this is from. Yeah, yeah, look at another name. Roberta Brandenburg. Yeah, that's sort of a purple envelope there. Pretty name, Roberta. From Gilgore, Texas. Yeah. Gilgore, Texas? Mm-hmm. Well, that's where they had all them all wealth, ain't it, down there? Honey, that's right, ain't it? 
Well, this might be the very one I'm looking for right here. <laughs> yeah, I'd pay the company $25 to marry a Iowell or two. I thought you said a while ago she wouldn't marry for money. Well, I wouldn't, but it sure ain't going to make me think nonetheless of her if she had her to own a few Iowells. No, 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 of course not, no. Yeah, I no. wouldn't hold that again. Granny, look at that. For the land sake, let me see what it says about her. Hey, well, here, let me see the picture, Lon. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, she is a good looker, ain't she? I am a manicurist. And oh, foreigner, huh? Yeah, or no, of course not. I have my own beauty saloon and, oh, and, oh, oh, oh. and would like to correspond with some handsome young gentleman about 28 years of age who is a expert barber. Dad, blame it. Well, <laughs> ought to give her name to Moe's Moose. He's a barber. Moe's is unmarried. Besides, he ain't no expert barber and he ain't 28 year old. Oh, she's awful protector, ain't she? Yeah, wish I knowed how to do barber work. Reckon I could learn it. Well, you have to be 28 year old, who though? That's right, ain't it? Granny, if I could have fell in love with that picture, too. Ain't she the prettiest thing you ever seen? Just look at that. Yes, sir, now she sure is. <laughs> well, sir, that's the first one of them Floyd Dory hats I've saw in here. Granny, that is a Floyd Dory, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. She wearing her hair in a pompadour. Well, I think I... about quit wearing it that way. She must be kind of old-fashioned in her dress. And look at that leg of mutton sleeves in her dress there. Yeah, yeah, she is awful behind the time. That's yeah. what I like about her. More than likely a sweet, old-fashioned girl. And running a saloon? Beauty saloon, she said. Where women folks goes and gets all that artificial coloring and permanent waves and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And blame that barber business in there anyway. Uh, what else does she say there? Yeah, see, she says, I am 5 feet 11 inches tall, weight 155 pounds, and... Yeah, she ought to be good and stout. And the enclosed picture was taken a few years ago, but it is the best I have, and I haven't changed much since then. Oh. <laughs> no doubt on what she looks like now. Let me see this other one. Get somebody that ain't so dead blame particular. Well, you act like we're on this matrimonial bureau just to find you a wife, Long. This is supposed to be a business well, here. We'll send their pictures out. I just thought if I uh, happened to see somebody that, uh, well, from Fort Smith. Uh -huh. I could get up there to see her. Hmm. She must not send no picture. Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Fell down there on the floor. I'll get it for you, Oh. What does she look like? Well, I do know. <laughs> Well, look there. She's standing on her head. Standing on... Oh, she got it upside down. Let me see that. Oh, well, I thought that... Was... Granny, she's pretty in that other name. Look at that. Granny, she's beautiful. Black curly hair. Diaz Vendetti. Huh? That's her name. Got it printed right oh, there on oh. the picture. Diaz Vendetti, the girl wonder. Well, that's a funny looking outfit she's got on there, ain't it? Granny's a beaver founder, Abner. She don't know it yet, but right there's a picture of the future Mrs. Lamette. Well, read what he says about her, huh? Yes, sir. I don't have to read nothing about her, though. This is a case of love at first sight. I yeah, can tell that already. <laughs> Granny, she's sweet looking. Oh, yes, Kind yes. of a girl that'd make a home for you. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Lonesome Heart Matrimonial Bureau, Pine Ridge, Arkansas. Dear sir, I read your advertisement and hasten to write that I am anxious to find a husband. Oh, yeah. Well, my granny sister, she's found one. I'll tell her that. <laughs> I am an actress, and uh, since my first husband met his untimely death, have retired from the stage. However, if I can find the right man, I would consider a matrimony if he would consent to taking part in my act so that I may resume my theatrical career. Uh, do what? What's that, Mom? Go on the stage. Oh! Granny, that's just what I'd love to do, too. Yeah, just yeah. what I'm looking for. <laughs> well, later when he goes on and says, he need not have any previous experience in the theater. Well, good. Yeah. Now, now she ain't so particular as them others. No, no. Need not have any previous experience in the theater because I do practically all the work in the act myself. All he would be required to do is stand against a target while I outline his entire body with knives. I am considered the world's outstanding knife thrower and also an expert pistol shot. Oh, my goodness. No wonder her first husband made an untimely death. Uh, hand me a dipper of water there, Abner. I feared I'm going to have another one of my sinking. Well, maybe this girl will find a husband, but we're pretty sure it won't be long. Blue 
Crosby speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.